I got friends, only wanna talk business. I got expensive, cause when is expensive? I got expensive, cause when is expensive? I've been reading all the work. And I've been shutting down these stars. Yeah, cause when it rain and it pours. Yeah, and I'm ready for some more. Yeah, and I've been reading all the work. <laughs> hey, we're muted. Yeah, it helps if we unmute yeah. ourselves. <laughs> doing doing the good process here. Hey, so welcome to Put That Coffee Down, episode number two. Two. Yeah, I'm Dooner. That is Kevin Hill. And we're here to talk about filling that funnel. Filling Filling that funnel. Filling that funnel. Now everybody has to run to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> of course, hey, you know what? We'll start with a quote. We love to start with a quote, right? Yeah, definitely. All right. Maybe you guys can guess where this one is from. Maybe I should do it first before I give it away. I'll let you I, guess, all right? Yeah, so it'll be a guessing game. And there is no such thing as no sales call. A sale is made on every call you make. Either you sell the client some stock or he sells you a reason he can't. Either way, a sale is made. The only question is who is going to close, you or him. Now be relentless. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> great quote. That is a great quote. It's a great scene, too. Yes. It really is. Both, both of his scenes in that movie mm -hmm. were, were top-notch. Yes. Uh, like sales motivation 101. Ben Affleck. Yeah, Ben Affleck. Yes. Yeah, so he did the um. Is, that was a sales uh, that 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 quotes from the sales scene. Yes. Of of the pep talk, but his interview. Yeah. Right, he did the group interview. Yeah. That was another great one. Yes. But what what is his character's name and what movie is it? Well, I the the, the movie is Boiler Room. Yes. And his name is uh, Joe Jones or something like that. No, Jim, Mike Young. Jones? Jim, Jim Young. Jim Young. Jim Young. Jim Jim Young. Yes. Hey guys, their phone lines are open. I'll show four. What does that say? Four two three yeah. seven seven zero. No, it's four two three seven one zero nine seven seven seven. Four two three seven one zero nine seven seven seven. Dial in. We got a question on YouTube. We missed this one when it went live. It was from Andrew Faith, and he said, mm -hmm. "What networking events would have the best opportunities for finding people with freight to move trade shows, logistics conferences, or just golf courses?" Uh, anywhere where people are that that move that ship things, right? Yeah. So it could be any of the three. Well, a lot of so I mean, at a lot of logistics conferences, what you're going to find is that it's a bit of a bug hunt. It is. You're going to yeah. find a lot of service providers. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So any shipper conference, you're going to find the majority are three PLs, asset bays, looking for shippers. Everyone's always looking for shippers. Yeah, uh, it's 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 the toughest nut to crack, really, because everyone is looking for shippers. So any conference you go to, it's a lot of service providers, just like you said, looking for shippers. So uh, you just have to to battle through, battle battle through that now what about trade shows how do you feel about those i like trade shows yeah i mean anywhere where you can network anywhere where you can raise your profile anywhere you can can almost or or have the shot of getting in front of a shipper or yeah. your customers it's good i've always had a really good uh re result with trade shows with trade shows with so trade shows, do you yeah. go right up to the booth and hit on them because i know that they are trying to sell they're trying to put their output out there so it always can create an awkward conversation do you wait until like the mixer afterwards and how do you approach that so so basically i'll, I'll do both right it really depends on how desperate i am as well yeah right? so how basically, desperate are you how desperate are you and there's been certainly times where i've been desperate enough to where i just hit every booth because i have to i have to have sales i have to fill that funnel yeah and that's the most important thing so i do that but i always hit the mixers too Always, always hit the mixers. Yeah, you got it. You because, can't stay in the I mean, hotel room. No, that's that's the that is the um, the worst thing you could ever do is pay the money to go to a, a conference or a trade show, and then once the conference is is done for the day, like five o'clock, you go up to your hotel room. Yeah, that is just wasted money because yeah. money is made after hours. You don't don't send those reps to. A lot of reps go and then they they just hang out around their own booth. They only talk to their own people. Mm -hmm. They only talk to the clicks that they know. Going to those type of events is to meet new people. And if you see your reps doing that, you're in charge of them. Don't send that rep again. They're wasting your time. They're exactly. wasting your money. And you could put a better person in that spot in freight we talk about capacity but in sales you have capacity too and that's the time of your sales force and the resources you're going to spend and budget towards them and it's very expensive to, to go to trade shows and the lead time or the, the the pipeline time of those leads is 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 long right, right. because you have to, to put in the time and effort and, and get in front of them then you have to go uh, re re-engage them, re-engage them, and maybe see them at two or three different trade shows, and become kind of you know part of the crowd or part of that conference crowd uh, before you really start having really good conversations and 
can move that that bowl along the, the sales process. So what about this one? Patrick O'Laughlin is sponsoring company. Happy hour is a good way to find freight to move. Uh, I, uh, yeah. Yeah? I, I, mean, I, I guess, I guess depends, so. Right? I mean, <laughs> you know, I, 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 any idea is good. Everybody likes a free drink. You know, I mean, everyone loves a free drink, so <laughs> it's not the worst idea I've ever, ever heard. And really, I mean, it, it depends on your style. Right, because I have tried a lot of different things, and a lot of things didn't work. But I didn't know if they're going to work until I tried them. And life is all about a process of elimination. Yeah. So until you do that, until you you risk doing something that might not work, you're not going to get very far. Today, joining us will be Benjamin Kaplan. All right, he's coming in in uh, about 20 minutes from now. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk to him about what it's like working at a big place like Covenant, managing a ton of sales guys, managing that funnel, that pipeline. Because today, what are we talking about? What do we survey we're, the world about? We're talking about filling the funnel. Yeah. And that's the most important thing that you can do as a salesperson. You can be the greatest closer, but if you don't have a funnel, you don't have anyone to close. Yeah, we, right? we will, And we talked about leads on the first episode. So yeah. if you missed it, go back. We talked about leads and we got into social selling and how to fill those leads, sending out newsletters, great way, doing lead magnets, however you go about getting them. But then you got to start putting those leads in the funnel. And those are your top of funnels right there. Those are your top of funnels, and you start have to know to work those leads, whether it's prospecting, getting meetings set. You know, basically, if you're calling people and you, you need to have a meeting or, or a phone call, yeah. you know, a demo or a, a phone meeting uh, for a dedicated time, unobstructed, you know, basically have a, a prospect focus, then what you need to, to do is, is not try to sell everything at once. Yeah. If you need to, to set up a meeting, if that's your sell cycle, to set up a meeting, just sell the meeting. First just phone sell call, the meeting? Just sell the meeting. That, that's all you have to sell. And I, I, I get in, I, I've done this before. I've seen a lot of people do it. It's like, all you need is a meeting. Why are you pitching the entire product? Why are you taking oh, through, yeah. you know, on, off a cold call? Someone yeah. might have 30 seconds and you're trying to pitch everything in 30 seconds. Ooh, I, I if, have a... Um, if you want to set a meeting, just pitch the meeting. I have a LinkedIn wall of shamer that we'll read near the end of the show. Oh, but yeah. uh, it's just classic. Terrible. It, I mean, it's the classic terrible pitch, right? So yeah. let's say top of funnels, your initial interaction. You say that you send that connection on LinkedIn. Hey, I, I, we were in the same industry. I just want to connect with you. Great. I yeah. accepted it. You already got through stage one in the funnel. Now you've qualified me as a lead. So what do you do next that you qualified me? You send me a generic cut and paste email. What are you doing with your life? Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah, no, it was, and it's a horrible cut and paste email. It too. was terrible. It, it was horrible. There, there's ways to get around that to have really good cut and paste emails. Well, this was horrible. Well, because it was all about me. Terrible. It was well, all about me. This is my company. This blah, 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 blah. no uh, one. It really dense. Right? Yes. I mean, it's not broken up. And you just look at this wall of words and you're like, I, I don't even want to read that. Also, I'm a freak media guy. Like, what do you like? I know, right? <laughs> it's you know, relevant I know. to me. It's relevant to years lending, old you, experience. Yeah. Or is it what, asset based lending for your trucks? Something was that what like it was? That. I don't know. We'll go I, through I get it those later. all the time, too. And I'm like, uh, but I hear what you're saying. A lot of people, they'll pick up the phone. They'll go, okay, I got a lead. I got a name on here. I figured out I'm going to call up the company. They're going to do that cold call. And instead of, finding out the person's problem, doing any mm -hmm. of that kind of discovery, really doing the research. They'll jump right into that, pull the string on the back of the doll, just press play. They'll go into like that 30, 90, uh, two and a half minute spiel. And I want to tell you this. You should you know what you should take on that first phone call before, before you call anybody with it. Get one of those mm -hmm. like speed chest timers. Yes. And if you're talking for more than 30 seconds, shut your mouth. As my dad said, he listened to our first show and he said, great, great show. My dad, very successful salesperson. It's a great show, but you guys didn't mention enough that you need to learn to shut up, which is ironic because we're, we're talking all the time. You, you do. And one of, the, one of the first training sessions, media's training sessions, I had at Freight Waves with Emily Zink. It was basically, she had the timer out and she's like, you're going you're gonna to pitch this or you're going to do this segment in 20 seconds. Yeah. 50 seconds. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And basically, until we got in under 20 seconds for our, our spill on, on camera, we, we had to redo it, redo it, redo it. And it really, really uh, impressed upon me uh, the, the, the power of sound bites, 15, 20 second bites. You know, so I saw this interesting thing online, and there's so much crossover in sales. Like, we're talking about funnels. We're also going to be talking about cold calls. We'll do a whole episode in that. But basically, with your initial top the of funnel sales. The whole three months of episodes. You're right on your cold calls, right? Yeah. So I saw a couple tips, and there's always tips that I want, especially on, like, LinkedIn, or if I'm listening to a good podcast, I'll pull out. Let me t Tell me what you think of this one. So when surveyed 80, and this was called Cold Calling's Not Dead. 
Okay. When surveyed, 82% of B2B buyers said they accepted meetings from salespeople who reached out to them in the last 12 months, and 69% of buyers accepted cold calls from new providers. The rain group also found that top performers earned the lion's share of results, generating 2.7 times more meetings than the rest of their team and closing more deals. Let's stop the debate. Cold calling still works. Stop being lazy. And there's a couple check marks here. It says, I don't want your script or a fancy opener. I want to know why you're calling. Yes. Super important, it's right? Straight to the point. And, and that's a, it goes back to if you need to set up a meeting with somebody, sell the meeting. Yeah. Don't, don't try to sell your service, you know, whether that's freight brokers or asset-based sales or technology. Sell the meeting. Give them a reason why they need to, to sit down with you. And then that's it. And, and just close it off. I, you know, just a few minutes, 30 minutes of your time. But here, okay, so this one, the next one conflicts okay, yeah. with what you're saying. It's but, but, gonna, but cold like calling the, is not dead whatsoever. Th- that, of course not. But the second one says, I don't want to schedule an appointment. I want to know the value of continuing the conversation. Well, that's what you have to do to, to set the appointment is give the value. Then that's all the value you have to give. Yeah. The value of continuing the, 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 the conversation. Don't try to, to oversell or, or go through everything, you know, like diary of the mouth. Yeah. Like a, a lot of salespeople have, uh, they want to spit out everything about themselves, their company, their service. Just give them enough, a, a little teaser, teaser for them to, to meet with you again. That's all you have to do. Next bullet. And there's, there's a fine art. Next bullet. I don't want to buy your product. Stop selling me. Another big important point, right? A lot of salespeople, they think that that they're not going to get no. You're always going to get no. Expect no on your first call. No is fine. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of no's. Don't try and close on your first call every single time you try to call somebody, especially in freight sales. We're moving boxes of freight, man. I know. So, so basically, it's multiple touches, which we'll see on the survey. Yeah. You know, there's multiple touches. So basically, if someone tells you no, it just means no for right now or no to this specific thing. So if, if you approach them again, re you know basically figure out how to add value to it, how to switch the conversation, how to, to, to just go outside the box and, and offer them something new every single time. Then the other one here is I expect smart questions, not qualifying questions that feel like an interrogation. So don't just read off a list of, of 10 questions your sales manager gave that you should ask to qualify someone. They're going to know, they're going to hear it in your voice, and you're going to lack empathy. The problem with reading off scripts is it's hard to put empathy in your voice. It's a trained art. I do it all the time because I got to read news. But it takes a long time to really figure out how to get that and to put that out there and to be in the moment and not sound robotic. It, it is, you know, so if you're going off the script, I, I, I will say this. If you are going off the script, learn it inside and out. There's a great, uh, what is it, Reservoir Dogs? Sure. Where they had the whole scene of uh, Tim Roth, I, I think Tim Roth, right? Yeah. Reading the, the thing, is, I mean, what is this? And it shows that progression to where he's learning it, then he's perfecting it, or learning it, and then understanding it, and then just completely going off, creating his own script of a natural story. Um Whenever, you know, he's in the bathroom and in some <laughs> railroad station <laughs> surrounded by cops, right? I just remember, the scene, remember that? I remember seeing when Michael Madsen cuts the guy's ear off and covers it oh, with yeah, gasoline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. That's Jokers in the middle. So here is a couple points, though, just to end on this before we get to the survey. Tom Short, who's a chief growth officer, he, he, does, he says he does a lot of cold calls, believes in it, but he also thinks it's 100% mindset. And he said that he sets these four parameters for himself every day before calling. And I thought they were pretty good. Zero expectations. I don't need anything from the person I'm talking to. When our conversation ends, nothing in my life changes. That's very wise advice. It takes the pressure off of you too, right? If you, if you don't expect anything, you know, no expectations. And basically, it's, it's not going to make your day or break your day. You just go and, and hit it hard every day. Uh, it, it, it just relaxes you, I yeah. think. I think a lot, of, a lot of it's head games, putting pressure on yourself. And if you just let go of a lot of that pressure, you, you kind of enjoy it more. Yeah. And you just you make those cold calls, and it's a contact business. The more activity you do, the more sales you're going to generate. I also like here that he says no regrets. It's, uh, he said, if I need to ask a question or turn into something they said, I ask. This is really important. I, I have to do this a lot as an interviewer, and I learned almost everything I did about interviewing from doing sales and having mm-hmm. to talk to people all the time and get information out of them and get them to start talking. And I always hate when interviewers want to script out a bunch of questions, especially in the form of sentences. I only like bullet points. I don't like full questions because then I can't react to what you're saying. I'm thinking more about the next question and trying to force you there instead of going with the natural flow of the dialogue. And that's a very important thing in sales. And that's why scripts are not that great. 
that they aren't because you, basically every buyer is different. Every salesperson is different. Everyone has their, their natural style. But of course, I, I guess if, you, if you're new coming into to, to, to freight sales, you probably need to go off a script for a little bit. And yeah. you're, you're going to be horrible on the phone. Uh, it's just a natural part of life. The first time you do anything, the second time you do, third time, you're, you're pretty bad at it until you get good. Um, but yeah, if, if you have years of experience or if you know, what, if you know where the, how to guide a conversation yeah. and, and you're the master of guiding an interview and that's all it is. Let me guide you to Patty Hinosa here. Patty uh, Hinosa, Patty. she helps companies more than freight in and out of Mexico. And she says, yeah. totally agree. The first call is to get the conversation started about your services. Patty, thanks for jumping in. You know where I learned there. that? Where did you learn that one? Patty Hinojosa. She, she, she was my boss at one time. Okay, so she yeah, down, loves down, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, you're exactly. a good disciple. So this is where I learned it. Russ Damien from uh, Gulick Freight Services Logistics says, what about if you talk multiple times with a customer, but they always say we are covered sorry? What do you say if you have trucks for them? Or he says, what to say you have trucks for them? And, um, I, I think he means what do you say to finally get their freight? So, so basically, every, your time, question. every time they say no, you have to change your, your present, or not your presentation, but you have to change your service. Yeah. You have changed the value proposition, right? So whether that's including including different options, becoming more optionality. Uh, so so basically, you have to you, you have to understand why they're saying no, and and present you know value that that, that takes that that no away. Well, that when, makes sense. Well, that's when you, I, I like what I you're think saying. I think I lost my words. No, to further it, I think that's when you go into your quiver. So a lot of us don't work for, for freight forwarders. We work for 3PL. So we have more services than mm -hmm. just pulling the freight or just pulling the trucks. So that's when you try to pivot them to start a relationship, pivot them to another service you may have where you can really help them. Be like, look, I understand that you value the relationship you have with your forwarder. And I'm not here to cause issues with that or disrupt that. Uh, as, as much as a lot of freight tech companies love to yell disruption, disruption, disruption is not a good thing in supply chain. I don't want, I want to enhance what you do. I want to lay on top of what you do. I want to, I want to help you further that along. And this is kind of good when you're talking about the funnel, because in the funnel, and this is a little bit of CRM management, but when you take that lead and he's top of funnel, uh, and he, as, as he's going down your pipeline you, and you're stuck there, you're stuck and he's like, oh man, just can't close, can't close the freight. Mm -hmm. Pivot him to another LOB. Pivot, pivot him over yeah. to another line of business. Maybe you can do freight auditing for him. Maybe you can do yeah. his bill auditing. Be like, you know what? We have a great bill auditing department. You probably want a third party to do that because you don't want the guy who's moving your freight to audit mm -hmm. his own bills. Sounds like a conflict of interest to me. Yeah, you just get creative. Get creative with the service. And, you know, basically, if they're going through the freight forwarder, find out who the freight forwarder is. Yeah. Go to the freight forwarder and see if you can work out a deal. Maybe you can help the freight forwarder Sabotage out. them. Not really okay. sabotage them, but, <laughs> but basically, maybe they don't want the domestic transportation. It's just a headache. It's like, hey, I, you know, we have this customer or this prospect in, in that, that we're sharing right now, or maybe that I want to get in on. Yeah. You know, what are your, you know, do you even want the domestic business? I can take that over for you. Here's you one, just have to be creative. One last one was peer to peer, and I I think this might be the most valuable one of all. And it's don't put anyone on a pedestal. It doesn't matter who they are. Just remember it's person to person. Remember they're another person like you. And if you can bring value into their life through your services, it, that much better. And if you can't, I mean, I guess be uh, be, a good, be a good liar. I don't want to say yeah. liar, but I mean. Yeah. If you work for a bad company, and sometimes you do, and it's tough when they really want to keep. I worked for one broker, and they they were really weak on a lane, but for some reason, the salesman was like, we really need to build out this lane. Yeah. They started KPIing everyone very harshly to this one lane. And I hated it because I was like, you know what? Our service isn't good on here. And if I win business on this, great. I got a quarter of business. But then what about the next three quarters? And when they never use me again, I know, just right? completely ruined something in my funnel. I, I know, right? So, so if it's a bad lane, you can't cover it or, or you can't provide the service. Uh, you're going to spend all this time landing someone who's going to use you once or twice and then adios well okay and, and pat uh patrick o'laughlin and and andrew morano they both said thank you for answering their questions yeah guys sorry we missed them last time we didn't have the uh youtube open we have it open today and we also have someone monitoring it for us so we appreciate your feedback there all right let's get to this survey like scott hall yeah. used to say on wcw nitro hey yo survey time <laughs> You do this every time. You're the captain of surveys. You send them out to everybody. We work on these questions. We really want the feedback of the community mm -hmm. and and what they're hearing from us. So the first one that came up, the first slide that we looked at was our the first question yeah. was how do you track your sales funnel, right? And and 
you know, I, I, I wish CRMs was a little bit higher than two thirds. Yeah. Uh, spreadsheets and, and emails still make up. I, what you, you combine that about 20, uh, only about 20%. So one out of five people keep track of their sales and funnels in, in either a spreadsheet or, or, or an email, which is, is not good. I'm glad you made that call out too, because if you look on here, it, you know, the bar looks big compared to spreadsheet, mm -hmm. TMS, EML, a uh, little, Little black, little black book <laughs> or, or iPhone. Sorry about that beeping. Yeah. We're connected by Bluetooth because the phone lines yeah. are open, by the way. It's 423-710-977. Good reminder from the phone doing that. Yes. Uh, more people use a little black book than an iPhone. Yes. I guess because they're not a little black book. Do you think that's because they're not including apps? Like if you use a CRM like Salesforce and you also use the app, you would just say CRM is an answer there? I, you know, I, I think you'd just say CRM. If you're using Salesforce, it doesn't really yeah. matter whether it's on phone or not. But, you know, some people, it's, it's like, kind of like your email, too, or your contact list. And you, you, I guess you spend yeah. half an hour a night going through your contact list and, and figuring out who you haven't called in a long time. Okay, I would say that I know that you say it's disappointing that. And because the bar looks so much bigger than everything else, mm -hmm. that just under 70%. It looks, hey, okay, uh, CRM's doing great. But I mean, it should be 99 or 100%. But it if, should, yes. If we're being honest, and if you've run a sales or marketing department, you've tried to integrate a TMS like I have in the past, you'll find that a lot of sales reps, um, especially ones that have been in the business for a while and are a little bit tech averse, they tend to do that thing like just searching their email for their leads and keeping track of it up in here. Head, yeah. uh, and I think that more actually use their phone like notepad and stuff that they're not putting here and they're putting bs inside of this crm so then when it comes to you oh, the salesman yeah you look at the funnel and it's it's uh and that's what i'm really looking forward to talking about ben kaplan about uh, uh yeah, Kaplanor it, about it, yes yeah. I, I i am too because i and as a salesperson i was always horrible at filling out the crm yeah until i i started managing salespeople and then you know i was i was the the, the best one putting the information in because i, I saw the value at that point well, I'll tell you, it's it, just a it, distraction of my day as a salesperson. It's like social so, media, right? It's like social media. You have to start, you, you have to use it a whole bunch in order to, um, in order to, in order to really get those get the fundamentals, value out of the it, habit. Yeah, because yeah, it does take habit. It, it really does. And it, it, no one likes to sit around and, and fill out paperwork. No. Or, or fill out, you know, I made a call. Yeah, it can be tedious. No answer. And I would say that sometimes people, and you can customize Salesforce quite a bit. And sometimes mm -hmm. people just have way too many. Uh, parameters to fill in on there, like really narrow it down. Only make your rep put in, you know, five or ten things. You have yeah. too much stuff. Uh, options are good much. unless you get too many options and yeah. you just accept every, you know, you, yeah. you integrate everything into it and it just becomes this wild behemoth. You don't want process to destroy results. You, you do not. Okay, so then the next question that we sent out was, what are the main sales KPI stats your company uses to track sales funnels? Surprises here, cold calls was was really high up, right? Yeah. Half of them were like, cold calls is the most important. Mm -hmm. In our pre-show meeting with Benjamin, who's going to be in here, he said that cold calls is, is a big one. It's a big one. So, so you have the start of the funnel kind of uh, with the cold call. Yeah. Where you get to qualifying and, and all of that. And you have the end where you really see the results when you close. So basically, it doesn't really surprise me that those two stand out the, the highest and everything else in the middle kind of gets overlooked a little bit. Now, what do you think about cold emails being so low? Is that a holdover from uh, a uh, an ancient time where email and stuff and technology have always been looked at as kind of reverse in our mm -hmm. business? Or is it always going to be that sort of fundamental in sale that your manager wants to see you hitting the numbers, hitting the numbers or hitting the bricks? Yeah, they, they want to see you on the phone really engaging with customers. Uh, the, the good thing about cold email and one of the positives is, you know, you can make 50 calls a day. Yeah. You, you get to talk to five, 10 people. Basically, you can send out 5,000 emails a day yeah. and get that same ratio talked about five people. Yeah, but see, the right? emails, we, we can automate. You should be automating yeah, your yeah, emails. Yeah, yeah. Like, during your day, you should maybe be spending an hour or two a week at least administering that make mm -hmm. sure your drip campaigns are yeah. good make sure the right people are on there all these companies that claim they have like these great e ai based email marketing your wonky stuff is going to yeah. get sent out especially if it pulls from your crm and some rep put someone's first name and so where their last name is supposed to go it's going to say mr joe or you know it, mm -hmm. all those yeah, kind of things cold emails only work if you know how to write good cold emails yeah and part of that is being very brief uh, under 120 words very readable 
you know, no wall of words yeah. and, uh, and really highly customizing with company names, people's names and, and, in spots where it looks like it's, it's hand tailored. Sure. And, but you know, it's just on the drip. Like you took out the quill. You took out stuck, the quill. Stuck yeah. in the, yeah. in the ink. Exactly right. Uh, some people may wonder why close ratio isn't higher, but I just think that's because you're going to close less than you call. So you, at times you really have to yeah. judge on effort versus uh, results, even though results are highly important. And there's always going to be a time when your sales manager, if you're on the bubble, they're going to pull your number. And if it's not where they want it to be, you're going to get that email, bring in your, uh, your, your cell phone and your laptop at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah, exactly right. So, so the, 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 more, the most successful salespeople that I know are the best prospectors. The, yeah. the, the, they, they make the most, call, most calls, right? Uh, you don't really have to be a great closer if you can make 10 times the calls that, that anyone else says, mm. or maybe 20% more. Well, right? I talking mean, about prospecting. A great equalizer. Talk about prospecting. A big part of that is yeah. how much research you do before that cold call. It is. That's you doing it. That's not the cold stuff. That's not the automation. That's you going out and doing the research. So on this slide here, anything that surprises you, we had none. Uh, when we first had this out, with the first 60 mm -hmm. people who answered, uh, under five minutes was, it was huge. It was. It, it was, was like huge, 60%. Yeah. Fortunately, the 6 yeah. to 15-minute people came in and made that look a little bit more palatable. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't think you can really research anyone over 15 minutes. If yeah. you never have a conversation, if these, if this is a, a cold lead, yeah, it should probably be five to 10 minutes. And if you're a quick learner, I mean, you can take a look, take a look at the person you're calling's LinkedIn, mm -hmm. right? Big, big yeah. secret here. Go take a look at their LinkedIn. Yeah. See if they wrote any posts though. Here's a tip that maybe not a lot of people take. So people have egos, right? And people like to hear their own voice or hear ideas they've said. So a, a great insight into people is that they've written an article before because yes. you can start using their own language. I don't want to say against them or weaponize it, but you can start speaking how that you can be that chameleon. Yeah. So, so basically I worked for a conference company at one point in, in New York and basically we had to get our own leads. We'd go to the company website. We were selling to, to uh, attorneys. So it made it a little bit easier uh, because they always write stuff and they have it published out. But, you know, name, contact information, uh, what kind of law firm. And then one of the fields we had to fill out was our hook. Mm. So that was something in the news, something published on the website that we could yeah. come out with the first hook. You know, hey, I, you know, Mr. Johnson, I, I saw where you just published this. It was really interesting. And to, to skim through there and find something that, uh, you know, at least makes it look like you know what you're talking about. Right? Sure. I really liked what you said about this. You know, do you have a few minutes for, for us to talk? You need that bridge. That's Why it. does what you do apply to what they yeah. do. You can't just jump across it. You need you need a logical bridge that they understand. Yeah. And a lot of times people keep that logical bridge in their head and they jump across, don't do it. Oh, yeah. So anyone who contacts us, uh, I know us, oh, so I really like your podcast, especially those. Oh, yeah. I'm going to read the entire thing. Yeah, and I we're going to read I, them out, too. When we're going to read it out. Yeah, but, at the end of the show, we're yeah. going to do a shout out to you guys out there. And by the way, one more time, phone lines are open, 423-770-9777. Dial us up. Uh, on average, how many touches does it take to close each new customer? Surprises here. Not really. It, it takes a long time. Yeah. I, in, in any industry, it takes a lot of time, six to eight. I think seven is the number that I hear over and over for whatever oh, yeah. industry. You have to make seven contacts. So basically, you're going to have to basically prospect, uh, present, probably represent, close, probably reclose again, reclose once more time before you get a signed contract or uh, be able to participate in any kind of uh, any kind of RFP. Yeah, you know, basically quotes. You have to quote maybe two or three times before you can actually get an agreement. So six to eight, even uh, above that, for like a closed lead in in freight sales. Is, is about normal. Hey man, what if you start that interaction with you send what? out a LinkedIn request, right? Yes. Interaction one. Yeah. Interaction two, you like one of their posts. Interaction three, you comment on one of their posts. Interaction four, you share one of their posts and put a good comment to it. Interaction five, you share an article with them about something going on in the industry. Mm -hmm. And then then six, you actually kind of start talking about how you can how you can have that meeting and talk about, oh, maybe our business interests align. Yeah. And, and maybe on, on that that it might be 14 or 15 touches, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you're incrementally getting better results or entrenching yourself, yeah. it doesn't matter if it's seven or 14 or, or 15, um, as long as you're getting positive feedback. Now, if you never hear a word out of that person, yeah. then you know that there's a, a time where you just move on. 
Yeah. And not, you, not you gotta go forever, find someone else too. Yeah. Just yeah. like any relationship, yeah. you know, if, you, if they're not giving you time exactly. of day, there's other fish in the sea. There is. And if you have a full funnel, yeah. it doesn't matter. You just go on to the next one. Go right. on to the next one. Let's bring our guest right. in here. It's time for Benjamin Kaplanor from Covenant. 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence starts. Here he comes. Two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. Yeah. Wow. You made it the whole countdown. <laughs> Hey, thanks know, for joining right? us. So, uh, as we're talking today, we're talking about filling the funnel, the sales funnel. Right. You're joining us from right down the street. We're in what is that warehouse row over there where you guys are located? Yes, Signal Mill. Signal, Signal Mill. North Shore. Yeah. yeah. Coming it's, in. A, it's a nice, nice office. It's a beautiful office. You thanks. guys took me over there. Uh, about a year ago, you guys moved in. We moved just, in uh, April, April last year. April uh, last really year. Really excited yeah. about it. It's been a great move for us. Very I li- good. I live right on. I'm not going to give away where I live, but I live on the other side of you guys. Okay. I, where yeah. we're there with my kids all the time. Great little area. Uh, Covenant Transport. Tell just people who are not familiar. What do you guys do? So Covenant Transport is a large. Oh, should wait. Should we have oh. him do his pitch? Yeah. Let's do all right. Thirty all right. seconds. Oh no. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah we're going to start you right That's out in true. the boiler room. Yeah. All right. So Ben Kaplaner, I'm Vice President of Customer Service at Covenant Transport. I uh, manage the brokerage division of our, uh, of our offering. Um, we have uh, capacity available today and looking to fill certain needs. Wanted to call and talk to you guys about what those needs are and uh, see if they fit uh, some of offerings that we have available to you. So um, do you guys uh, offer any truckload movements or... I'm running out of time here. <laughs> that's fine. No, that's fine. You did good. <laughs> yeah, you did good. It's also it's it's kind of hard to come in because what do we know, what right? are we we got media right here. All right, we're yeah. off. We're yeah, off, you we're, know, we're off the elevator. We're off the elevator. But you know, you have an interesting background, and one thing that I liked, and if you go check out his LinkedIn, which I do before I talk to anybody on earth, I check yes. see if they LinkedIn. I know you're like right. you're a bulldog, for example. I am. Yeah, I know that state. And I know that you have a. So if I was going to sales call you, I know that you have a background in operations. And you did that before you did sales. I did. I've actually been in trucking for a while, about 25 years now, and uh, run a little bit of uh, customer side, uh, and carrier side, as well as um, involved in the asset operations. There you go. Yeah. So there you go. U.S. Express before this, right? Yeah. And, um, so I've worked with some great brands, uh, yeah. Covenant, U.S. Express, um, along the way. So yeah. been a good very ride. good. Very good. So, so at Covenant. Oh. I was just going to find out if that if he thinks that that helps or not because some sales reps they come into the business and I've worked with them sort of the greenhorns they have mm-hmm. no they have no concept of they have to learn a lot at one in one time they have a lot of flying out they have to learn supply chain they have to learn how trucking works and then they also have to sell it where you get operational people who come in they are they understand all of that stuff but sometimes the problem there can be then they overthink people's problems correct yeah and so I uh, I go on joint sales calls with our, our sales team uh, quite often. Uh, just to offer that operational input to the sale, which I believe is very important. Um, and being involved in the day-to-day is extremely important. So having someone there alongside the salesperson to help um, that conversation really really works well. Yeah, I've always found, you know, so I was a freight broker, then I started selling to freight brokers, and it was infinitely easier to, to wrap my mind around selling to, to freight brokers after being in their shoes, right? Of course. So I, I know what their pain points are. I, I know the frustrations of the job. I know m- what my offering will do to, to, to solve that. Um, so it's, it's you find that you know in, in different cells, if, if you're the client and you move to cells, it's a, it's a much easier transition than, than if you just come into a, a new industry as a salesperson. Of course, of course. So yeah, so at, at Covenant, what... Um, so we went through the survey. Mm-hmm. You saw it outside, yeah, I right? Saw it. I was Very good. Along outside. I, what, what do you think? Yeah, it was interesting. Um, a couple of things uh, shot out to me was the number of, of touches prior to uh, a close. Yeah, um, I thought it would be actually higher than it was. That the one person that put one in there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the guy with the little yeah. black book. That guy. Yeah, yeah, just, know, right? He has, uh, you know, well, he's a one bullet kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. Call me after this. Yeah. We'll <laughs> yeah. <get it> <laughs> so, uh, w- what did you? So when you you run a bunch of sales guys, a sales team. What on here is anything here troublesome to you? No, not uh, not at all. Um, again, I think our uh, touches on, on my team is probably more towards that fifteen number. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. there's just a lot of things that go into play there uh, to create some relevancy for us, and and the relationship piece is big for me. Uh, so it's definitely on the um, on the further scale on that on the right. Yeah, definitely. I, and part of that, I think, on, on freight sales, freight sales, 
is that it's hard to differentiate yourself, mm-hmm. right? So, so basically, you're calling a shipper, whether you buy the leads or you go on LinkedIn or whether you research it or you don't research it, they're getting sales calls all the time. They are. And, and it's basically brokers are saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and how, what's the best way to really differentiate yourself from what everyone else is saying? Because everyone can, everyone can say, oh, we have we have great capacity on the lane, right? right? We have a 99% delivery. Right. And, and you say the same things, and you're like, no, I mean it. It doesn't really matter if, if you mean it or not, because everyone else is, is giving them the same spiel. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's um, very important to have confidence in your team that's behind you operationally to support the business that you're selling or soliciting. Uh, so going into those calls with that confidence, um, it really puts you ahead of the, and, and mm-hmm. sets you apart from the rest um, in most cases. So um, I think we have um, a lot of data to support our sales team. Uh, so they, they're they confident in going to those calls and knowing that uh, if they do and when they do close that sell on this phone call, they're going to come out of there with uh, with success story. So. What, what do you do with, the, with that tease customer, the one who just wants you to take them out to lunch all the time? They want the sports tickets. You know, they want... Uh, they yeah, just want you to wine yeah. and dine them, but they're never doing the business. But they, they're convincing. They're like sociopaths, aren't they? I think they, they are, They make you feel yeah. good until you pay the check, and then they're like, all right, I got to go. Okay, you know? got to go. Okay. I, I'm not going to take your phone calls anymore. Yeah. I, I got my dinner. I, I, I'm going to ghost you. Yeah, you we've, cut all those guy off? <laughs> we've, we've all got those accounts, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? I know, right? <laughs> uh, you do have to know when to, uh, when to cut it off. Yeah. I mean, you can't uh, continue to run those dead leads and, um, and, um, uh, very, for very long, especially in today's environment. It's very important to move, move on. What do you make? What, so what does a good pipeline look like? We were talking about how people view them, and most people who are doing it right are probably using some sort of CRM, which I imagine you guys are as yeah, well. Yeah, we do. We're, we're tied closely with a CRM. Um, I think it's a great tool. It's extremely valuable. Uh, it helps you stay organized, um, uh, which is very important in what we do today. Mm-hmm. Um, but you've got to be relentless in your pursuit of these uh, accounts that you're calling on, prospect quickly, uh, and move forward. You can't um, delay there. So fill your pipeline, keep it full, and continue to manage it. What are some of your favorite qualifying kind of parameters? I want to say questions because then it turns into a interrogation. You know, how many how many shipments do you make? Yeah. A week? you know, there's there's certainly a better way to ask that question. But kind of, what are your parameters? Do we have a that slot? Oh. oh, we have a call. Sure. Hi, thank you. Hold on, let me make sure this is connected. <laughs> I think we are. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a quick question for you guys. I am a senior in college, and I'm really thinking about getting in sales, but I just don't know how where to start. You guys have any advice for me? Mm, interesting. Do you, and you do, you're just out of college. Are you taking any courses in in freight or logistics, or are you just you're just interested in getting into this 3PL and supply chain space? More just interested in, into the logistics of it. Okay, crazy man. Do you want to take? Yes, yeah, I know. Right? Why? Uh, <laughs> Why? <laughs> no, this is a great business, and thank you for interest. I mean, um, one of the things, one of the reasons I got into uh, transportation, other than growing up into it, uh, it was uh, it. It always uh, you always find your find your way. Um, trucking companies in general, or logistics companies, are always looking for good people, hardworking people, um, and they're everywhere. So uh, this is a business that will be around forever. I hope. Knock on wood here. But um, so you can always land on your feet. It's a good, secure job if you're working hard. So. Uh, there are um, a lot of resources out there available to you. Freight Waves is a great one, uh, so stay uh, stay in tune to those. And um, usually in um, career fairs and schools, I mean, we're very heavily involved in that. I know a lot of our competition is as well. Yeah, definitely. It's just what eight ten percent of GDP trucking is. So as you said, it's it's always going to be here. If it's not here, then we're all in a lot of trouble. One right. thing I will you say know, too, nothing is, is going to get moved. And we, we just saw it happen on Friday with your team over at Covenant is that when people fall down in this business, not just trucking, oh, yeah. we hear about all these layoffs and stuff. There's usually another company there and people are very happy to extend a hand and pick them back up. This happened with Coyote and I know that Covenant had a pizza lunch in and you extended jobs to a number of those Coyotes. So, you know, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you to yeah, you guys. Definitely. Definitely. So you, you have more people on your team now than, than you did a week ago, right? We do. We're, yeah. And we're growing. We're investing in our, uh, our floor today. So we are a growing environment. And um, yeah, it was, a good, it was a good setup for us. That's great. That's great. You, you, have, you guys have plenty of room to, to, to grow. That's, it's a great office. Yeah. It's, it's that whole top floor of single, Signal Mill. Like Dooner was saying, I mean, it's a, a very large industry that we're in, but it's a small world. So uh, you do help, uh, help your, um, 
bear um, your teammates out. You also help those around you out. So it's a good family environment. I, I really enjoy it. We promised uh, Jamin Elvedrez that we would ask you a question yeah. about how many leads for a company that your size, how many leads do you expect a rep to have in the funnel? And what, what does that kind of look like? So it varies uh, based on the rep. Um, we have some reps that are very organized in their funnel and it's very finely tuned. Um, and we have some that broadcast a wide net. Um, it works, it just depends on how you manage your, your business, but it can work for both. We have, a, we have another, another call. Another call. <laughs> Hi, is this London? Hello? Hi, London? <laughs> hi. Oh, hi, how, how's it going? <laughs> I don't okay. even know. All right, all right. All right, back to... Wow. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. I hope he's okay. This I, is what I was afraid of coming to this I don't. Yeah, just getting a call like that. Well, I mean, I'm going to blow, blow yeah, yeah, him up, blow right? Up. There we go. He's he's out of the picture. So the funnel varies on that. So what do you ultimately look at? Because one of the questions here is very pertinent to what you do. Was uh, what? How do you KPI your guys? So or your team? What do you KPI to? Is it their amount of cold calls, their close ratio, their their pitches, their cold emails? What do you value? What's your uh, hierarchy there? So definitely monitoring and measuring all of those items. Uh, cold calls is a, um, a measure of of effort. Uh, and we follow that closely. Um, and then turning those cold calls and, and qualifying those into an opportunity uh, is, is another uh, form of metrics for us. But offering pricing uh, and presenting, which I took as the presentation mm -hmm. um, portion of that, is a, another big way that we, uh, we judge our success. Yeah, are the, the sales reps responsible for coming up with the pricing? Or no, you, you do pricing, we right? We do the pricing, yes. Okay. It's that, a separate good. piece of ours. That's good. I, I, I Basically, I used to have to do my own pricing as well, and I will admit I was a, a horrible pricer. <laughs> I, I, I was. It was mostly well, flat. You want to separate too, the is, sales from pricing. I, I, you do, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, prefer, I, preferred, I would have preferred doing my own pricing. I hated having a pricing department. It was incredibly inefficient at the place I worked in because they were KPI to a standard of a 24-hour reversion, and you would... Mm -hmm. you would Lose any trans? You could not get transactional business with a twenty-four hour turnover. Well, I had a thirty-second turnover, and it was always that, wrong. Well, well, yeah, okay. Well, at least you're, at least I mean, at least you're getting at least you're getting revenue at, at know, that right? point, right? Uh, Stephen Jack, Stephen, and I apologize if I don't get your name properly, but it's Stephen uh, Jacksey. He's uh, in customer solutions. He says, when pursuing new business, how do you get in the door without stalking the customer? Um. So you've, you've got to make yourself... That's assuming that there's something wrong with stalking the customer, <laughs> right? <laughs> that is, that is yeah. Okay. No, you've got to make yourself memorable and, and do it as quickly as possible. Don't be shy. Get out there. Make the phone call. Um, and it doesn't have to be a long conversation. Just be memorable um, and uh, continue to be... So relentless follow-up, that's the key to uh, closing sales in my book. Mm, you've got yeah. to be organized yeah. in your follow-up. Did you hear our quote at the beginning? I don't it was know. from Jim Young in Boiler Room. Oh, I did hear that. He said, every sale yeah. is a close call. And he ends it by saying, now be relentless. That's it. I'm done. Be relentless, right? That's right. And that's inside you. That's up here. Yep. Nobody can really teach you that. You got to bring that out of your heart and you got to bring that out of your mind no to play that mental we'll game. Done. So yeah. on, on Jordan Belfort, right, the, the straight line selling system, and it's all about cold calling. One of the one of the things that stands out from, from that book is that in the first five or six seconds of a phone call, you have to be enthusiastic and smart as a tech. And, okay. and portray that, right, in, in your voice yeah. and in the, that first sentence that you utter. And then you get their attention, right? You exactly. Get attention, and then, you know, a hook is always good. So A lot of guys, people lead nervous, though, and I think that that, well, that offset, yeah. when, you in, when you get the phone, too, and you kind of get that weird pitch or the person yeah. who just wants to go right into their script, you know, like they may as well be an automated answering machine call because they just, they just attack you. Yeah. They just mm -hmm. attack kind you with like information. Ask to yeah. do a podcast and just throw a elevator pitch out there. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. But we yeah, only exactly. gave you 30 seconds. <laughs> a lot of sales guys will call you up and they'll There's go like on three for, minutes. So we have potential guests sometimes call us up and they'll be like, yeah, we want to come on. But during this, they'll tell you what their company does. And if they go on for more than 90 seconds we usually i would be like no thank you yeah no. that would be it's, a terrible it's, guest yeah yeah it's radio you gotta punch it, in and punch out yeah yeah this is all about philosophy of sales not pitching your own product all right what about bernie suggs she asks i'm a businesswoman trying to get my business off the ground she needs some good advice and she has a face palm so i think she's she's running into some roadblocks so the first thing she probably needs is uh well a business an idea of what the business is right but I oh, guess also helps. just go out there and like if if she's doing um what is she doing what kind of business what kind of business are you doing Bernie 
I don't know. It says she works for a cleaning company, so I'm assuming that she she cleans things. But no matter oh. what you do, you work for a cleaning company, you sell cut cone knives, whatever it is, you need the leads, right? Yeah, you need the leads. So, so whether that's uh, a telephone book, knocking on doors, dirty going houses, LinkedIn, yeah. yeah. You, nope. you, you can also find, make a lot of excuses uh, yeah. not to yeah. make these phone calls, guys. Yeah. But, so, no, no, what I would do if I was starting, takes a, as as much time and effort to make the excuses so, as it does just to make yep. the call. So here's what I so I yep. talked to we talked to um what was it Andrew Leto right yeah and he said that he started Global Trans by going on eBay and looking at freight that weighed more than a hundred pounds because he knew that it would be very cost prohibitive for someone to obviously send that to the mail. He's like, that's not a mail packet, that's freight. So what I would do if I was starting a clean company in this day and age is I would go on Airbnb. And I would look up properties because they need quick turnover times, right? Yeah, that's a that's great what, idea. That, that's what I would do, Bernie. And, and, and email every property yeah. owner. That, that would be my and lead. And say, hey, I, I can be your cleaning service. Yeah. Because they that. all use a cleaning service. I would do And then I would also contact any realtors in your area as well because they often need cleaning services or people moving out need cleaning mm-hmm. services. So depending on how heavy duty you are, that's that's what I would do. So now someone go out there and send me, send me a commission. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but do you guys agree with that? Is that what you would do? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. Good, good points of advice there. Yeah, and be relentless. Be re- yeah, per- persistence, relentless. You're going to be told no so many times that you just have to get to the point where I don't care. Hate the Spurs hat. Is that a San Antonio Spurs hat? Uh, yeah, no, it's a uh, Tottenham Hot Spurs hat. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, so who? <laughs> all right, so he says, love the show so far, but he hates Patrick <laughs> does, but he hates the Spurs hat. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it is. I, I, it know, is what it is, right? It's a nice looking hat, though. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so what are some of your best uh, when, when you're qualifying? When you guys are qualifying leads, what are the parameters that are are, are most important in freight sales? So it's pretty simple to us. I mean, we're a large um, truckload provider. Uh, offer uh, dry van and, and refrigerated uh, truckload movements um, nationwide. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, it's pretty easy to qualify uh, by asking the question of having if any truckload shipments. Uh, obviously, you want to know what um, what lanes, what are their heavier volume lanes, and, and you can get to that. But um, uh, just knowing that they have a truckload spend uh, is an easy qualifier mm-hmm. question for us. Yeah. yeah, and we had that. I think we forgot to mention this one because we were running short on time to have you come in. So, it, And this was, what are some of the normal questions used to qualify new prospects? Thank you for picking up that thread. The, the biggest answer yeah. on there was number of loads per week and normal lanes. Um, so very sort of typical stuff a lot yeah. of guys want to lead with. That seems like there was one guy earlier before you came in, he said he was having issues getting, he was really going for the freight. And those are going for the mm-hmm. freight questions. Right. Those are, I want... I want you to buy freight for me. I want to yeah. buy you. Want to buy yeah. capacity. Um, what you can also do is, is call the sales department. Yeah. I used to do that from time to time. Hey, what's your best selling product? You know, are your customers everywhere? And you just uh, you know you just talk talk <laughs> for a couple minutes with salespeople, and then you you might call the shipping manager next, or you might wait a day or two. But you get all that intelligence. So if you know where they're shipping, course, yeah. you know where they're shipping, then you're going to come, and that counts as research. Yeah, Ben. My question for you is, for that guy who's always trying to sell the freight, he can't sell the freight, the guy's like, I'm good, my carriers are great. What do you do in that situation? Do you pivot them to another service that you guys may have, try to keep that relationship? Um, where, where do you go from there with that? This guy said he was really frustrated, he's had about 10 touch points with someone, and he just can't get the freight. So we're pretty fortunate to have multiple people doing this role. Um, so I think that um, dusting off some of the older accounts or things that we've qualified in the past and just not been successful with, can give them a sense of confidence to call and say, hey, this is not a true cold call for us. We've done, we've talked before, um, and maybe it was really more just a, a relationship didn't match with the last person that was working with them. So I think those are some mm. things that work really well. Yeah. Interesting. You know, so I guess my last question, I guess, before we let you get out of the uh, the boiler room here, is you you kind of just said it yourself. You begged the question. So people have a funnel. They've got this funnel pouring on there. When a lead stays too long in someone's funnel, what are the parameters you guys use to give that to that other rep, to give someone else a shot for it, to give them those Glen Gary leads? Yeah, so for ourselves specifically, we have a certain amount of accounts that you can have protected. I think I spoke to that a minute ago. Uh, and then timelines within those accounts. So as they hit that date, they're out and they're free game. So you're hungry the hungry people out there, the newer reps that are typically coming onto the board, they're they're munching on those things and going to get it. So if you don't protect that business and close it within that time frame, you got to move on. Yeah, because it's out of here. Yeah, fill that funnel. Again. There it is. Yep. Right. Get rid of those leads. Fill them with new ones and and keep grinding on. Yeah. Yeah. Very and, good. Any lasting advice or how do people reach out to you? 
Uh, so you can reach out to me um, at uh, covenanttransport.com, uh, B. Kaplan at covenanttransport.com, or on LinkedIn. Um, happy to help uh, anybody in the industry um, find their way. So just uh, give me a call or reach out anyway. Very good. Thanks. Thanks Great. for putting Thanks. the message on. Thanks for coming on. We yeah, appreciate that, right? it. Thank Jordan. you for coming by. Appreciate it. You bet. All right, now it's time to get some of uh, our listener shout-outs and everyone. Yes. Let's give back to the audience real quick. But before we do that, right, we have to do a little bit of the uh, the wall of shame. Yeah. So I get this interaction. We touched on it. Someone gets the connection with me. They, it was very short, very succinct. Okay, cool. And it's not that hard. I connect with anybody on LinkedIn. Not Timothy Dooner, D-O-O-N-E-R. Yeah. By the way, 4237... What is it? 710-9777. Connect with yeah. us live on the air. Uh, so this this girl sends this to me, and she she gets through, and then she goes, Hi, Timothy. Have you ever wanted an all-inclusive platform but don't have one yet? Terrible opening line. Uh, that is horrible. Like, I, when have I ever thought that? All, what is an all-inclusive <laughs> platform? Yeah. You talk about abstract. Yeah, yeah. We have an answer to, to you, what you need. Please read the summary. Geez, now I got to go to work here. I got to go to work. I got to go read your summary yeah, know, right? to get the vast advantages their platform offers below. Then let's talk. I would love to give you a demo. And then, then it goes on for ten more sentences talking about this technology group's functionality and drainage, transportation, delivering a cloud-based holistic solution. Buzzword city. You say, oh, you're yeah. saying nothing. You're increasing nothing. visibility with your AI. You're telling me nothing. Nothing whatsoever. It's just all abstract. Here's the kitchen sink. We do everything. Yeah. Yeah. Platform. I mean, what, was it a diving board? I, I don't know. It, it was. Just, it's. Uh, don't send it's those. Like, don't send those emails like right away. Like, did, yeah. Just tell someone you notice something they do, or or how you can help them. Don't don't put some hypothetical question out there to me. Like, I, I bet you've always been thinking about some all inclusive platform. I know. I, I just haven't. That has not been I happening. Know. We're we're shipping this podcast by truck everywhere. I guess or oh. intermodal. I mean, hey. what freight do you have? All right, here's some shout-outs. Ken Daniel, Vice President and General Manager at Dependable. He wrote, I just watched your podcast from yesterday. It was excellent. Great topic. Very informative. Thank you for putting together such a great podcast, Ken. Right? Very good. Thanks, Ken. We appreciate that reaching out. Uh, Austin Helms. So we had talked about I know, that's the good. value right. of cleaning a mailing list, right? Yes. Because if you don't do it, you're, you're going, if you just buy a bunch of garbage leads off the internet or you're just ripping out bounce. of a CRM, yeah, this will happen. If you if you become the marketing manager or the sales manager, you're administering the email list. What you want to do is just pull that whole thing out, send it off to a company that can look at it. Uh, because you know, it's a nice meal, we'll mention him one more time. One more yeah, free yeah, time for you. you. Know. It's Zero Bounce. Austin Helm from there said, I heard your podcast and wanted to thank you. For the mention, we had an inbound client come to us and tell them that they heard about it on this very show. Sponsors, be yes. wise, right? Very wise, yeah. No, we're giving the we're giving the I, real it, advice it, here. It really is. <laughs> it is. Uh, Kenneth Cowell, you know, and we've seen him on the battlefield. He uh, he said he came across the new show. He loved it. Just a reminder about uh, just a. I remember what? our conversation. Sorry, I can't read. I remember <laughs> our conversation about email strategy oh. and our approach is similar. Keep up the good work. If I can help in any way, please let me know. Um, amazing. And he said if he's in, if he comes down to Freight Alley, he'd love to come yeah, on the definitely. air. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I talked to him a couple years ago and we just uh, kept in touch. This guy, Connor, he said, can you show me what a great LinkedIn post would look like to generate inbound leads? Well, and this is what we're going to do. So yeah. we are going to come up with our top 10 rules, basically, for writing really compelling content on social media. We're going to put it out. You're going to download it by filling out one of our lead forms. Oh, and you'll be on our magnet. email distribution <laughs> list. And you'll see the process from start to finish of how to collect your leads. That's good stuff. Keith, yeah. Keith Lequar, Senior Marketing Communication Leader, uh, also an adventure sneaker, adventure seeker, not sneaker, <laughs> adventure, I can't read, adventure seeker and dog lover. He said, uh, I enjoyed listening to your podcast this morning on the way to work. Keep up the great work. Can we connect? Of course we can. See, that's a great connection, you know? It, it really is. What did he do? He complimented me. And yeah, I know, right? Said, of course I'm going to connect with that yeah. guy. <laughs> that's a good way to get your leads though reach it out really to people is. and just mention something they did and like I said yeah, not everyone does a podcast right but people they have speaking engagements that you want to talk mm -hmm. to they have uh, they write articles a lot of people yeah. these days write articles and they publish them on either LinkedIn or Medium mm -hmm. go seek those out Google the people you're looking for Everyone knows you're going to get a little bit cyber stocked. And the thing is, if you don't have much of a cyber trail, especially if you're in sales or marketing, you're, you don't have that much of an identity. So start creating one. 
very wise. Steve Casson from Kingsgate Logistics. Love those guys. He yeah. wrote, uh, I take you saw, saw me creeping on your LinkedIn. <laughs> Here's another thing. Some people get afraid. They're like, oh, he's got in. I, I don't want to crawl around on there. Dude, that's those. I look at those as leads. Whenever I see, I, I check my link, my in mm -hmm. every day to see who's been on my page. Oh, and yeah. it tells you underneath if you're connected or not. Yeah. And if not, you hit connect. I just hit connect. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, I mean, we're we're on LinkedIn to grow our network. Yeah. So please connect with us. Yeah, I'm definitely. Not... <laughs> I, I love it. You know. <laughs> oh, I love. But this. Yeah, there's nothing awkward. It's not like fa I think some people think it's like Facebook, where like mm -hmm. if you don't really know the person that well, is it awkward or anything? Like, no. All you need yeah. on LinkedIn is really to know someone's name. Most people are gonna, and if they don't, you don't even know. You're gonna forget, especially yeah. if you're sending out a lot of connections. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> uh, Ken Daniel, that was that here. Here we already got to him. Um, Jason Ickert, oh, he's going to come on soon, oh, right? Yeah, definitely, yeah. He wrote on Chattanooga. Thanks for the shout out, guys. Great kickoff episode to a new show. Looking forward to more. Jameson Gofort said he finished it this morning on his drive in. Great stuff, my man. We have to get some pronunciation work to do, <laughs> but I appreciated the shout out. Did I get that right this time? Jameson Goforth. I think maybe I called oh, yeah, him James no. last time. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Ah. Amanda Lucas said, hi, guys. Entertaining and informative. Thank you for the great show. Subscribe. And what was cool about a lot of these is that you noticed we were both getting the same We were, yeah. So they're, they're sending uh, the, the same messages to, to, to both of us, and that's fine, too. Yeah. Right? I, I'm not offended by you copy and pasting. No. You know. You I know, expect to, to, it. Yeah. I actually I, am in. I'm, I, I, it's too much work to have two unique. Yeah. emails for the same show right? yeah you don't you know? have to be like i like yeah. this specific quote that kevin said and yeah, then yeah, give no, me my right? own we don't it's, it's not that great yeah uh eric towies he uh, ctb he's an efficient business leader mm -hmm. third party logistics industry he said he really enjoyed this keep up the great content uh joe lynch said wow thank you for the shout out on the show yeah. great first podcast Aaron Dunn also thanked us for the shout out. robert bain great show lfg which is let's <laughs> go um <laughs> Valerie McSweeney, here's an example yeah, of one. So Valerie, yeah. Vice President Eastern Region at McTrans, she said, uh, Hi, Timothy, just watch Put That Coffee Down on Freight Sales. She really enjoyed it. She would love to connect. Cheers, Valerie. She said this, She sent the same thing to you. Yeah, ex exactly the same thing, which is good. Yeah, no harm, no foul. Yeah. Michael LeBlanc, uh, owner at Newden Logistics Services. This is a great <laughs> show. Keep up the great work. Michael uh Tony Weaver, he wrote one to you. He said, uh, hey, Kevin, my name is Tony Weaver. I'm an agent oh, yeah. for Bennett. Really appreciate you and the team from Freight Waves coming down. Yeah, so so Saturday we were down doing a panel discussion for the Bennett International uh, corporate meeting in, down in Atlanta and, and met a lot of great freight agents. Um, basically, I plugged the show down there. And, wow. uh, yeah, it was, it was a great time. And, and thanks to, to to Bennett for for having us down, and and certainly if David Carpenter especially is ever <laughs> is ever in Chattanooga, or next time he's in Chattanooga, he is he is more than welcome to come join us. He's he's a, a great he's like a football coach. He's talk about a motivator. Wow, and even Brian, see, like these things come in in real time. You're hearing yeah, yeah, those exactly little buzzes, right. but uh, Brian. Gibala, and I hope I'm not saying this wrong, he's a national account manager at LTI Trucking Services. He said he filled out the survey last night and enjoyed the show today. First time listener, I'll be back for more. Hey, thanks a lot, awesome. Brian. Um, love the show. And Patrick O'Laughlin, uh, Chief Operating Officer at Regiment Logistics. He yeah. said, love the show and thank you for answering my questions. Looking forward to next week's show. Can we connect? Absolutely. Right here. Yes. I'm hitting the check mark. Right here. I'm hitting the check mark. Love it, guys. Thank you so much for reaching out. We appreciate it. Kevin, yeah. before we go, we're going to add even more value. Kevin has a brief book review. I do, yes. So basically, this is Made to Stick. And it's a book I read about seven or eight years ago. It's, it's really about marketing and communications. And it, it, it really lays out the, the guidelines or the principles for how to get your message across. And, and basically, it means that any novice who follows these six principles that I have written down right here... Oh. Um, it performs better than any expert that's that's not using it. So, these are the keys to a successful message that sticks in people's mind long after you quit talking. I suppose. Right? Okay. So it's got to be simple. It's got to be unexpected. So there's got to be some kind of a twist that that oh. tricks your mind. Like a good joke. A good joke. Exactly yeah. right. Um, concrete. No abstract words. Like. You know, unlimited platform, you know. Yeah. You know, tell me exactly what it is. Yeah. And and then I can I can connect the dots. It's got to be credible, right? It's got to uh, it's it's got to pull on emotions. It's got to be some kind of emotional mm. kind of response by the person. 
and it's got to be framed in a story. So people, people remember stories, right? They don't remember facts and figures, but if you tell a story about those facts and figures, people will always remember that. Hmm. And basically it dives into uh, chapter after chapter of those six principles and how to apply them, and it gets pretty granular in there. And it's, it's one of the, the, the best books on, on sales and marketing I, I think I've ever read. So <laughs> basically, Terrific stuff. I, I want to send this to somebody. Okay, you want to send it to somebody. I, I want to send it to somebody. Who okay, we, uh, so how should we go about doing this? Should we have them? Because people are watching on multi-different platforms. Should yeah. we have them tweet at us or email us? Or, or and we'll just do a drawing? How are we going to go about it? I don't know. Let's do a drawing. Let's do a drawing. Oh, cool. Let's do a drawing. drawing. So you can get us on any method. You can leave a comment here on whatever stream you're watching. You can uh, share the show out and tag us. You can tweet at me at yeah. Timothy Dooner. That's D-O-O-N-E-R. You can connect with either of us. Let us know you wanted the show. You want to be in the drawing. Whatever it is, let us know. All you got to do is interact. We'll pick somebody. We'll send yeah. it to you. I'll send you a What the Truck shirt. Speaking of What the what Truck, the truck. <laughs> What the Truck will be on 1 p.m. live on uh, Friday. It's also on yes. at 2 o'clock after this, right after the show, directly after we leave this booth. Hang around. Don't close the channel on the live stream. Anthony Smith, chief economist, he will be doing Freightonomics for all of you. He, he will, and he's got an all-star cast today. I mean, oh. I think he's got like five guests cycling in, talking about the freight markets nice. and what we can expect for 2020. That's awesome stuff. Subscribe to this show, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, everywhere. Podcasts are heard around the world or subscribe to FreightCast. Get every single show, including Kevin's Great Quarter. Guys, download FreightWaves TV app. It's free, guys. Make the switch. Put on your office. You can watch all day. Uh, and then I guess we'll see you back here because we're running late. Yes. We'll see you back here at 2 p.m. 1 p.m. 1, 1 p.m. next Wednesday. Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Love Eastern, doing the show. Eastern time. This is this is a great show. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Th thanks thank for your you time dinner. today, Kevin. We're very invested. Yes. All right. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Here we go. <laughs>